today is not a day to cry. <laughs> today is a day to celebrate. Celebrate one of the greatest things that has ever happened to this valley. Puff. Permanent University Funds. <laughs> a new university. A university that's going to unify the valley from Brownsville to Harlington to here to McAllen to all of the valley, unified together. Outside, I want to acknowledge everyone that's out there that couldn't get in here. Can you believe the crowd that's out there? Can you believe how many people were streaming this to? They understand exactly how important this is. And there's so many leaders in this room who understand how important it is. We have our two new reps, Terry Canales and Oscar Longoria. They're here today. We have Mayor Cortez. We've got Ramiro. Garza from the city of Edinburgh. We've got Alonso Cantu here. We've got Larry Saffer. We've got everybody. I'm, I can read the names off forever and ever. Dan Gerwitz, Joe Brown, you know, John Seacrest from Cynthia Sakalinski is not in the newspaper. She's here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Joe and Dora Brown are here. Everyone's here because it's so important. These things just don't happen, OK? They don't happen. For so long, we have not been a eligible for PUF. When this university came into the UT system, it would have required a constitutional amendment to be able to get PUF. Two men over here put their heads together and started thinking. And we challenged him because Julieta Garcia and I would go up there every time and they'd start talking about Puff and they'd talk about Lear money and they'd talk about all this and we'd just hang our heads down, you know. <laughs> just hang our heads because we were never going to get any. And we'd watch as the, if this university get a new building or this university get a new, we weren't going to get anything. And then something miraculous happened. We got a chairman from Westlaco, Gene Powell. We got a chancellor from Laredo, Francisco Sigueroa. And we got Pedro Reyes, an executive vice chancellor from down in Alamo. And now we're going to get Puff. We don't know what the name of the new university is going to be. We don't. We don't know how it's all going to be set up. We don't. But we know that it will have a medical school as part of that university. We know that it will be an emerging research university and that Chancellor, you asked me, how was my campus feeling? I think you see we're pretty damn excited. That's how we're feeling. <laughs> There's somebody else that is incredibly important here, OK? Ken Shine has helped make this possible with the medical school. I'm very grateful that you are here, Ken, and that everything you're doing with 1115 waivers and with getting residencies and working, thank you so much for helping this happen.
And finally, she, she was nice to me, and she just said I was her partner a little while ago. Um, I said, you know, this is a woman that every time I see her and every time we part, we say to each other, te quiero. <laughs> I've told you all that we are family. Somos familia. No? Pero estamos creciendo. Y somos una familia muy, mucho más grande hoy que ayer. <laughs> We're a lot bigger a family than we used to be. Well, I get to introduce the mother. <laughs> La madre. <laughs> she is one of the great presidents. Time Magazine picked her as one of the top 10 in the United States. She has a heart of gold. She cares about this valley. She cares about our students. And now all of our students are our students together. So we're honored to have her here. And if you could, a few words from Dr. Julieta Garcia. I thought Puff was a magic dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Jody, I do. Si lo quiero mucho. <laughs> I can't say it in English, pero si lo quiero mucho. Your husband and I, uh, I thank you for loaning him to the Valley and for allowing him to become part of this wonderful work that we have together. Um, there are some people that just kind of fit as if they've always been here. And you and Robert fit as if you've always been here. Thank you for allowing us to become family together. I appreciate it. Thank you. We have all um, sat at those meetings when um, puff distributions would occur. And I, I have worked for several chancellors. And, uh, and uh, when the puff distributions would, uh, would begin to get distributed, uh, I'd be quiet for a while, and then I just couldn't resist. And my arm would just, without control, go up at the very end. And Francisco sat next to me for, uh, well, the chancellor sat next to me for many of those years because he was president of the medical school for a while, as we all know. And, uh, and I'd say, just for the record, once again, Two universities are being left out of the puff distribution. And the chancellor, whoever it was at the time, eyes would begin to roll. The other presidents would get nauseous. And I'd say, and I'd finish, Pan American and Brownsville, once again, are left out of the puff distribution. And then we would bow our heads, Robert, and the, and the world would go on. So a um, few months ago, chancellor call, uh, sends me a message. And he says, come visit me in my office. Well, you know, when your boss says that, and I kind of write back, and I say, well, what can I prepare? <laughs> and it's not evaluation time, you know, it's not budget time, it's not, <laughs> so I'm thinking, what did my audits okay, what happened? And so I wrote him back and said, you know, any hints? And he said, no. <laughs> Jeez. I said, okay, so it took like five days for us to arrange schedules to be able to go, so finally I make it up to Austin. And he said, ad nauseum. For eight years, I heard you raise your hand and say what I've just said earlier to you. He says, you've never said that now that I'm chancellor. Why not? And I said, because I knew you'd get to it. I didn't know how. I didn't know when. But I also know your heart, and I knew you'd get to it when you could. And then he smiled, and he says, we got to it. <laughs> 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 what many have tried for decades to do to no avail is now about to happen with your great help. Uh, this was the first step that we must take. 
but we still must go now to the legislature and convince the rest of the state of Texas that this is exactly what lo que merecemos, what is time now for the Valley to be part of. We could not have been here had it not been for Robert Nelson in partnership with us, thinking about this together, understanding it together, feeling it together, crying together. Uh, all of the things that we've had to do to late night phone calls saying, do you know what's going on? Do you get it? Do you, did they tell you this? Well, I think they were telling me the same thing, trying to understand how this is all going to play out. And Robert's absolutely right. We know little of the detail, but what we know for certain is it's the right thing for us to do at this time for the Valley. We have a window of opportunity we'll not likely get again. And we need to take full advantage of it. And Robert and I mean to take full advantage of it. So now it is my honor and my pleasure to introduce the Chancellor of the University of Texas System and our friend Francisco Siguerola. Julia, you know how to make an introduction. <laughs> well, uh, first of all, um, gosh, it's just fantastic to be here at University of Texas Pan American twice in, in the past two weeks. Uh, we just, Veronica, held a, a wonderful VISTA Summit here uh, a little less than two weeks ago, uh, which is really remarkable. Um, but before I give my presentation, really, it was UT Pan American that, that taught me how to think big. That is, you know, how to begin to start looking at the skies and, and, and really seeing beyond just our own little planet. Because it was here at Pan America that I was introduced into science. And that was when I was a fifth grader in um, Ryan Elementary in Laredo, Texas. They took the yellow bus and they brought us here to Edinburgh to take a look at the planetarium. And, and in fact, it was, it was this planetarium that kind of opened my eyes you know, to, to, to things that are way beyond just our, our boundaries. And so I want to thank uh, Pan America, and I want to thank that planetarium that was here <laughs> that taught me to think big. And that, and that is a true story. Well, Juliet and Robert, I want to thank you for your incredible hospitality and, and your support. And, and Chairman Powell, it is you and the board who ought to get a standing ovation you know, for you know, basically understanding this vision and understanding this need in the Rio Grande Valley. And so my salute to you and to the board. Well, today we are here to announce that the UT System Board of Regents has really taken a very bold and transformational step regarding the education, the health, and the economic future of the Rio Grande Valley in our great state of Texas. For the past four years, the Regents and I have shared a vision of planting a larger University of Texas flag in South Texas and the Valley. When my eyes take a look at the landscape of South Texas and the Rio Grande Valley, I see a region standing in the intersection of the Americas. That's what I see. The UT system has an enormous responsibility in this area of our great state. We have experienced some challenges. Who doesn't? But we also have great opportunities that can be realized through innovation, and as Alonso says, through hard work. There's no substitute for hard work because if you work hard, you can become creative, you can innovate, and you can solve solutions or solve problems. Well, during my many visits to the Rio Grande Valley since becoming chancellor and in our Valley Vista summits where I had the opportunity, my team had the opportunity 
to listen to madres and padres and abuelitos and abuelitas and estudiantes and hijos and community leaders, it has really become crystal clear to me that we do need to create a new vision that will provide greater opportunities for our University of Texas campuses in the Rio Grande Valley. It is my firm belief that South Texas should be given the opportunity to establish a new university that has the potential to become a tier one university over time. I look at the state of Texas, Denton, Houston, Dallas, Arlington, Lubbock, El Paso, San Marcos, and San Antonio all have emerging research universities, but the Valley does not. The success of our four University of Texas emerging research universities, the success of our great flagship, the University of Texas at Austin, the success of our six wonderful health institutions is due in large part because of the Permanent University Fund and certainly other programs and other funds that the regents are able to allocate to our campuses. The three UT institutions in the Valley do not have access to these funds. Then one has to ask yourself the question, how can we align and integrate our three major campuses in the Valley, UT Pan American, UT Brownsville, and the Regional Academic Health Center to make an emerging research university possible and to catalyze the transition of the Regional Academic Health Center into a Valley-wide School of Medicine? Well, what if we expand our thinking beyond boundaries? What if we put ourselves in that planetarium and look far into the galaxies? What if we create a new university with its own school of medicine within its governance? An institution that converges the extraordinary human capital that's in this audience and the audience of those that I met in Brownsville earlier today. What if we converge this wonderful, remarkable human capital and other assets of our three UT institutions in the Valley? What would this institution or university look like? If you take a look at this bar graph over here, which is not the one that I want there. <laughs> Maybe I'm pushing buttons here. The bar graph to the left would be the student body or the enrollment of students of this university. This would be a student body of nearly 30,000 students. You take a look at the bar graphs to the right of this new university and you see Arlington, you see UT Dallas, UT El Paso, UT San Antonio. You suddenly have a student body that is pretty much close to UT San Antonio. Now you start taking a look at the demography of this wonderful and talented student body and suddenly you realize that this new university would be the second largest university in the United States of America, the second largest Hispanic serving institute in the United States of America. So I'm gonna ask Veronica, what does that mean for foundations? What does that mean for those that we invited, like the Lumina and the Gates and the Carnegie Mellon Foundation, about what we can do in this wonderful new university? Next slide. When you take a look at the faculty headcount, uh, we're close to 1,500 under this new university structure. And again, that's very similar to UT Arlington, a little higher than UT San Antonio and certainly higher than UT Dallas and UT El Paso. Next slide. This is okay. We, we, personnel count, again, you know, we're actually above Arlington, Dallas, and El Paso, pretty much like UT San Antonio. Next slide. 
This is a slide that I want you to pay some attention to. When you take a look at this university, if, if it existed today, we would have about $11.4 million in restricted research expenditures. These are funds that we bring from, from federal grants and other outside sources that are restricted towards research. Then you take a look at UT Arlington, UT Dallas, UT El Paso, UT San Antonio, and you'd have to say, we're not doing so well. And then you ask yourself the question, well, why? Well, certainly, over the past two decades, you know, we have not been investing heavily in research infrastructure. Um, and, and, and so, you know, we don't have as many doctoral degree programs as these other emerging research universities have. And another issue is that Arlington, Dallas, El Paso, and San Antonio, much of their research has occurred over the past 10 years. But these campuses are eligible to a variety of funds that Pan Am and Brownsville are not. One is the Valley has not been eligible for PUF. So PUF is how our regents allocate funds to our other campuses to support, in many ways, their research infrastructure. We have not really been traditionally eligible for STARS funding, you know, which is other important resources that the region's been able to provide to recruit outstanding faculty who can both teach but also come in with federal grants. This new university also, um, you know, as an emerging research university, you are eligible for funds such as the Competitive Knowledge Fund or the National Research University Fund that the legislature provides that are eligible for emerging research universities, but not in the Valley because we don't really have a path for an emerging research university. And then, what happens if now you allow PUF funds to be eligible, allow us to be able to allocate STARS funding, eventually competitive knowledge fund, national research university funds? Well, certainly now you're getting resources that you can make a difference here. But there's something else that I would like to convey to you is that as we reach our path to establishing the School of Medicine, the School of Medicine falls under the governance of this new university, and I can promise you this number is going to go way up, and you will be at a competitive advantage. Next slide. Endowments. If we were to create this university today, you'd have a total endowment of $70.5 million. I think you should be very proud of that because you're not far off from UT Arlington and UT San Antonio, which are emerging research universities. But then you ask, we've been doing this without matching dollars from the legislature. Veronica, you know what TRIP funding does for emerging research universities for every dollar that the university raises to support research, the state will match that dollar. And then we, the Board of Regents, allocated university TRIP funding, which does the same. So you've been doing this without TRIP funding and without U-TRIP funding. So imagine now if you are in the same playing field with the same rule books. I think you can do far better than that. Next slide. Total operating budget is about $540 million of total net assets, which makes you, this university, one of the largest entities in the Lower Rio Grande Valley. Next slide. Well, yesterday was a historic day at the Board of Regents because the Board of Regents allocated and affirmed very strongly that they're in unanimous agreement in setting the path to reach, to make this become a reality. We also have an opportunity uh, through a new university structure to streamline administrative structures and so forth where, you know, if, if you just take a look at experiences when one does this, just being conservative, we feel that we can be better stewards of our dollars and just conservatively be able to save at least $6 million after our upfront costs of, of developing such a new university. As I've stated, this new university would allow us to integrate the School of Medicine within this emerging research university that would put 
emerging research university in the state of Texas, your emerging research university, at a competitive advantage. Medical education and health professional education will be valley-wide. We will have medical students in Brownsville, in Harnagen, in Edinburgh, and in McAllen. Medical students now aren't taught the way we're, they were taught when I entered medical school in 1979. Our first year medical students and our second year medical students and our third and fourth are also being educated at the hospitals and our main hospitals you know, for this future school of medicine are in Hardingen and McAllen, Edinburgh and Brownsville. We are making great progress again with Region 5 and with our CEOs of the hospitals in establishing the core residency programs necessary for this medical school. Imagine if we can educate our students here and also do their residencies here. Over 85 percent of those students and residents will stay in the valley and it's probably the most powerful way of addressing the physician shortage in one of the most underserved regions in the United States. Yesterday, Chairman Powell and the Board of Regents unanimously approved this vision and granted me the authority to work with the legislature and to talk to the public, to talk to you, to establish a new university that includes UT Brownsville, UT Pan American, and the future School of Medicine. This will integrate our Valley institutions into a comprehensive new and emerging research university. I cannot think of a faster way to establish an emerging research university in the Valley with a population of over 1.5 million people. We envision this as a university that spans the entire Valley with a presence in each of the major metropolitan areas, as I've stated, Brownsville, Edinburgh, Harlingen, McAllen, to boldly expand the medical education in the Valley, that is, to give it extra horsepower to transition ourselves from a regional academic health center into a school of medicine, I asked the Board of Regents to allocate $100 million over the next 10 years to accelerate this transition. This will help us recruit the necessary leadership, such as the future dean of a school of medicine, to expand the number of faculty educating our students and our residents, to enhance biomedical research, and to work with our hospital partners to establish the core residency programs throughout the Valley. This was another very significant vote that the board took yesterday. I'm a little afraid that if I keep on presenting before the board, they're not gonna let me present anymore. <laughs> but, but I'm so proud of this Board of Regents who understands the need and the reasons why we need to do this. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my firm belief that if we can accomplish this vision, we will forever change the economic and the educational landscape of the Rio Grande Valley in South Texas, and in fact, the entire state of Texas. If we focus, if we focus our attention on this crucial region of Texas, we can create new jobs, attract new federal and private funding, launch new facilities, and most importantly, provide higher education and training and a stronger future for this generation of high school graduates in the Valley and for generations to come. We heard from John Hakanos yesterday, who is an economist, who is doing an economic impact study for us. It's not yet final, but he did give his brief, his preliminary findings to the board as part of the presentation. He stated that this vision has the potential in the next 10 years to create 10,000 new jobs at an average salary of 65,000.
the average salary of the Valley, and you know this better than I do, is probably a little less than 30000 This educational pathway, this opportunity, is one of the most powerful ways of expanding opportunity, expanding education, and fighting poverty. It is that important. Of course, we're not naive. There are risks to launching any enterprise of this scale and challenges to face and overcome and many questions that are still yet unanswered. But the vision is so right. This new university does require approval of two-thirds of the Texas legislature. So let me be clear. In order for us to be able to create this new university, we need to get a two-thirds legislative vote. On the good side is that this is a bill that we can present to our legislature that does not carry a fiscal note to it. That means that all we are asking for is the authority to make this new university possible for the University of Texas. And by so doing, the Board of Regents can bring new funds to the table, which would be permanent university funds. It's my fundamental core belief that our founding fathers who gave the West Texas lands to the University of Texas to expand educational opportunities had no intention of leaving South Texas out. I firmly believe working on both sides of the aisle in the legislature and with your help, we're going to need your help uh, to develop the coalitions and, and the swell of support to make this happen. Now, we also understand that changes in institutional identity are never easy, but we can overcome that if the vision is correct. And as I've stated, there will be some initial operational transitional expenses to create a new infrastructure. As I've stated, I don't have all the answers, and we can't solve every problem at today's get-together, but I believe that the creation of a consolidated new University of Texas institution in the Valley is going to truly outweigh any of the risks that we confront. We can create an institution that is a model for the university of the 21st century. We can provide cutting edge technology, blended and online learning, and world class facilities to better prepare our students to become future leaders and well educated citizens of the world. We can provide a new destination for students who are interested in receiving a college degree using the most advanced developments in higher education. edX, the Institute for Transformational Learning, my EDU, the very powerful tools that the Board of Regents have given us that have provided to our universities over the past year to improve student success and access. It is amazing what technology can do now. So for those who question, you know, how are we going to do this with Brownsville being, you know, down the road and us over here being geographically separate, I, I, I convey to you that I have been truly impressed with the power of technology and, 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 and the ability to teach online and blended online learning and, and the new technology that's available to educators to actually expand and inspire students even more. So it really allows us to spark all that creative act on how we actually overcome these challenges, which I consider immense opportunities. We also have a unique opportunity to establish this new university as an intersection with the Americas. President Julieta Garcia refers to UT system institutions and the border regions as interface zones. Even though the United States serves 2,000 miles of border with Mexico, there really are few touch points between our countries. In Texas, El Paso, Laredo, and the Rio Grande Valley represent significant points of convergence where our UT institutions make first contact with our neighbors to the south, not only through student exchange programs and shared research, but also on the larger stage of commerce, culture, and language. We have a heck of an advantage 
you know, being where we are in our geography and in our demography. We have an opportunity to make the Rio Grande Valley a center for bicultural programs in economics, in business, in medicine, in biosciences, in energy, in environmental science, in Latin American studies, and I can go on and on based on the creativity of our faculty. Imagine our impact if we remain authentic to the region with our educational research programs because this region of our state, and in fact America, will never forget its past. And so imagine if we can also be authentic in developing those bicultural education, research, and healthcare missions. Any student in the world interested in the international bicultural programs would benefit from attending this new global institution with opportunities to engage in programs connecting all of the Americas, North, Central, and South. In addition, we would be able to build a human capital, the human capital that industries, industries in the Valley need so they can in turn enhance the Valley's leadership role as one of the nation's strongest manufacturing bases. We can build a vibrant healthcare industry, a vibrant port industry, and other international ventures, all the assets that already exist in the Valley. Ladies and gentlemen, this would be great for business in Texas. I'm asking for your support on this. The new university has the potential to become a major nexus of cultures that can share what we have in common and greatly benefit each other. This is an incredible opportunity for everyone in the Rio Grande Valley. So in closing, maybe when I was a youngster in that planetarium, I really wasn't watching stars. Maybe my mind was really saying, how can we connect Brownsville and Pan Am and a future school of medicine? <laughs> to, be to become a real sparkle, a real star in the state of Texas. It it's just amazing how life takes you into these, it, it, you know, how small the world is. So I want to give you, I want to thank you again for the opportunity to share in this vision with you today. And now I'm asking Gene Powell, the chairman of the Board of Regents of the University of Texas System, and himself a native of Westlaco, to share his thoughts with us. I cannot do this without the incredible support that I receive from my chairman of the board and the complete alignment that he and I have developed you know, over the past two years in advancing excellence in everything we do and providing every region of our state equal opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here today, and thank you so much for showing your support for the board and for Chancellor Cigarroa and the work that we're trying very hard to do for the Rio Grande Valley for UT Pan American and UT Brownsville. Uh, the Chancellor told you the story about the planetarium, and it's interesting how these things come full circle. Let me tell you a brief story that uh, ties me back to Pan American in 1961 and back to today. I was a sophomore in high school playing football. It was early September. School had just started. My father was a very hard-working individual. He wasn't the kind of guy that would drop by practice and spend any time watching, but he happened to be at the superintendent's office one day on business and our practice field was right behind it. So unbeknownst to me, he walked around the corner before he got in his car and he watched about 15 minutes of practice. And that evening, 
I got home and we had dinner and he said, tell me something, what was going on at practice today? And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, I noticed that you'd be playing on the offensive line, then the play would stop and the coach would have a clipboard and you and the coach would look at the clipboard and then he'd point and you'd have to go to the sidelines. And you'd stay on the sidelines for two or three plays, then you'd come back and the same thing would happen all over. He said, what was that all about? I said, Dad, uh, you know, he, he was putting in new blocking schemes and he had them wrong. And I was trying to get him straight, you know, get straightened out as to how to block this. <laughs> he said, son, you're a sophomore. <laughs> this guy's been coaching football for 20 years. And you're going to explain to him what the blocking patterns ought to look like? He said, let me tell you something. If you want to play football, say yes, sir, and no, sir, and shut up. He said, if you'd like to debate, go join the debate team. Well, being somewhat uh, as a 15 or 16 year old will be, the next morning I get to school and what do I find on the bulletin board? Advertisements for the debate team. <laughs> I thought, I'll show him, I'll go show up. So I went to debate. I, after supper, he said, where are you going? I said, oh, I'll tell you when I get back. i got to go to the high school for a minute. We just work, leave three, live three blocks from the high school, so I walked over to the trials for the debate team. I made the debate team. We were, guess what the topic was in 1961, the UIL debate topic? Will we or will we not have federal aid to, uh, to education? We're, and people say, when did it start? When did your interest in education start? I said, 1961, at the Pan American Library, because I had to come here to do research. Wesley Coe's library wasn't big enough. The freeway was not there. I came through Ed Calchalsa, I came through Monte Alto, I wound around. <laughs> I get to the campus. My mother and dad let me have, can you imagine, a sophomore in high school, they let me have the car what they never thought about was that route going back, I was there, the, the janitor normally shoved me out at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the night. The cantinas were closing, and I was among all the people coming out onto the highways. It was kind of dangerous. But I got through that year, and I learned a lot about higher ed, and I learned a lot about the government, and I thought this, this became an interest to me from then on. Now let me tell you, uh, Another thing about that, that coming full circle, a member of that football team, a senior member of the football team, and a member of that debate team, Mayor Richard Cortez. <laughs> Think about the blessing that we have to have the opportunity, the mayor, myself, Chancellor Sigaroa, Senator Lucio, those of us from South Texas, the blessing that we have to be able to come back and help do what we're doing today. Now, you know, we've had regents from the Valley before and wonderful, wonderful people who would have loved to have done this, would have loved to have gotten this done. It just was not possible with the politics of those times. Just, just wasn't possible. I'm telling you, it aligns <clears throat> when you have two executive vice chancellors, a chancellor and a chairman. And think about that, the chairman's from Westlake, the chancellor's from Laredo, the executive vice chancellor's from Alamo, and then there's poor Dr. Shine who's from Rhode Island. <laughs> It took him 40 years to figure out what a good tamale and a good enchilada tastes like. <laughs> but seriously, we have a group of people that understand this place, and we understand how great this place can be if given the opportunity. You've never been given the opportunity because you've never had the resources. In fact, think about how amazing it is that we've done what we've done today, that you've done what you've done today, and what President Nelson, President Garcia, and their predecessors have done without PUF funding. So it is amazing what can be done if you can access those funds. Now let me say again, 
This is not done. We have to go to the legislature and we have to get a two-thirds vote. And we have to ask them to give us the authority to access our money and to give it to you all. That's where we need your help, we need your support, we need the help of our legislative branch, our executive branch in getting this done. That's where you can help us. We need you talking to everybody that you know. We need support from the Chambers of Commerce. We need support from the retail groups. We need support from the businesses in the Valley. We need support from the educational groups. This is a life changer for the next 100 years in the Rio Grande Valley. So please help us in any way that you can. This is a opportunity that will not come again in our lifetimes. I promise you there won't be three executives lined up from the Rio Grande Valley again in, in our lifetime. So we have this opportunity to get this done. Please let's not let it get away from us. Uh, Representative Alavetti said it earlier, and I'll say it to you now, si se puede. Two-thirds. We're going to do better than that. We're going to reach out to every legislator up there, and we're going to work with them. And our delegation is going to work with them, and they're going to be active. So if I could, we'd like to hear from our delegation today. Senator, would you please come forward first, and then we'll have the two representatives. <laughs> Senator Eddie Lucio. Thank you, President Nelson. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As I sit uh, at my chair today, I have a, a moment to reflect, a moment to think back over the years and what it has meant to me to, in a very humble way, to be a part of the Valley Delegation. I served at the local level in Cameron County for a number of years and I taught school before that, but when I was elected state representative in 1986, things kind of changed for me because um, the only time I had really seen and established a lot of friends was at a golf course. I played a lot of golf in the early years. I got a chance to work with many women, educators, businessmen and women, uh, people from all walks of life. Uh, doctors, engineers, et cetera, et cetera, that wanted to see improvements, obviously, and uh, for their delegation to work on issues that would bring to the Valley and to our region of the state opportunities and benefits, quality of life issues. Today I sit in my chair and overlook all of you, and I can think back, but some of you that I've known, many of you who I've known over the years, um, who have made a huge, huge difference um, for those of us that have served at, as your legislators. I'm proud to be able to say that I'm one of your two state senators, Senator Hinojosa and myself, have worked together over the years in the House and in the Senate. Um, our delegation is one that we can be extremely proud of uh, the young leadership that you see on stage that will be addressing you in a few moments uh, will take off running. Um, their level of energy is one that I wish I still had, but we still have a lot in us. And I want to I wanna just reflect a moment on the people that have made such a huge difference, some who are not with us anymore. I remember that when I got elected as a state senator in 1990, uh, one of the biggest passions I had was health care, being one of 10 kids. And by the way, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> I, uh, I too had that kind of rearing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. 
My dad was a disabled American veteran, a veteran of foreign wars who preached Americanism and patriotism every day of his life to uh, his 10 kids. My mother kicked in with citizenship, but the number one issue, number one issue obviously was education, and of course next to that, very close to, to that was healthcare, access to healthcare, being able to see a doctor, check into a hospital if, if able to do so. Um, even though the socioeconomics was not what we wanted it to be with a family of 12. But I remember back, and one of my dad's um, greatest friends was a gentleman that, whose brother distinguished himself right here at this university, which is my alma mater, and that's Dr. Lino Garcia. I played a lot of golf out in the public course, and I was a caddy, and the, the head of maintenance uh, and a gentleman that really did it himself, didn't depend on other, other workers to do the work, he did it himself, was a, a, just a, a, a gentleman by definition. His name was uh, Rafael Medrano, and Don Rafael kept on talking to me. Every chance he got a chance, he had a chance to talk to me about it, his little daughter, who he was so proud because she was so smart and, and she was getting a wonderful education. And guess what? Yeah, she grew up, got educated in the Brownsville schools, but wound up right here. I don't know her married name, but she's Dr. Hilda Medrano. Well, Hilda, are you, where are you? <laughs> she was, there she is right there. And after the 1990 campaign, uh, we had a, a chance to work on one of the dreams that I had, and that was medical education. So I took off throughout my district, and back at that time, I had two counties. I had Cameron and all of Hidalgo, and I met some outstanding medical professionals, two of which are no longer with us, Dr. Carlos Godinez, who became a close personal friend and also Dr. Ramiro Caso, who many of you in this room remember. And all, but who, a gentleman who is here is Dr. Gaetano. I hope he's still here. Dr. Gaetano, are you still in the room? And he was part of that team. So many uh, made a difference in a seven year study that we did. So yes, uh, the medical school and medical education is very dear to my heart. And the announcement um, yesterday brought joy to my heart, knowing that we could put it in, a, in an even faster track, as has been defined here today and announced here today by our incredible leaders. Our chairman is a valley boy, and his heart is in the right place. And they chose one wonderful, compassionate individual and Dr. Sigoroa to lead the way at one of the most respected university systems in the country, the University of Texas. So I thank Dr. Sigoroa for all he has done in a very short period of time. Um, and I can go on identifying so many of you, and I will if I may, because it's important I don't get this chance very often. I want to, to congratulate all the school boards in, in the Valley because the leaders in those school boards, and men and women that serve, are building the foundation that will lead to students at this university. And I want to thank a very dear lady, a great leader, and she leads through example, Hilda Garza de Chasso, president of the McAllen uh, Independent School District. And lastly, uh, I could identify a lot of businessmen and women that are here today, but there's one individual who I met at a boardroom in 1990 who had ideas and very soft-spoken. But he was uh, Theodore Roosevelt, I guess. He spoke softly but carried a big stick. And over the years, he dedicated himself to make the valley better, building the necessary infrastructure, hospitals, business districts, 
anything and everything that we needed here, given back to the community that had given him an opportunity to be successful. His education was the base for that success, and that's our very dear friend and one of the very best citizens of our state, Alonso Cantu. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I would be remiss, and the list goes on and on and on, Gary and Juanito, the list goes on. But the people who have reflected your wishes and who have worked real hard over the years to make a difference to you in Austin, work long, long hours with their staffs or the state representatives and senators that have come before us and those that we have had a chance to work with over the years. When I served in the House in 1987, um, I, I kept a bunch of folders on my desk and everybody wanted to know why I had so many folders lined up, which each one of those folders had the name of the city that, uh, you know, that we had in Cameron Hidalgo County. I was a state rep from Brownsville. And the significance of that was that if I opened up any one of those manila covers, folders, it was the same issues that people were interested in. It was education, it was healthcare, it was economic development, jobs. But what we really wanted to see happen here was yes, highway infrastructure and all of that. We wanted our young people to have an opportunity to come into new classrooms and buildings that would serve to give them what they were looking for, a foundation of life. When I came here in 1964, 65, there was a couple of buildings, Juanito. That's all they had here in this campus. We were at the old campus. We were at the old campus and we were going to school and rubbing elbows with, with individuals that later became team, teammates at, with the Philadelphia 76ers and other professional basketball teams. We have an incredible legacy here a legacy of education that is being transformed now into something even bigger. An opportunity, as I see it, to have one of my dreams come true, and that is, it was, it was expressed here earlier, to have a family of people in this valley come together in unison, united, going after a cause, this is the only time I can remember that one is better than two. This is one time that I can say that we have an opportunity of a lifetime for the state representatives and senators to come together, work together, and make this happen. And we have to sell that to the legislature and our leaders. So I want to congratulate the students in this room because that quite frankly, is the reason we're here. And they too will someday sit up here on this stage. They too will take the place of the Peñas and Cantus and others, uh, Garowitz that are here today, Randy Whittington from Harlingen and others that have made such a huge difference. They will take the baton and they will take it to a higher level because we, right now, together, are making it possible for them to reach their higher goals of education. So thank you for the opportunity that you've given me over the years to, to be part of the family, La Familia. Uh, and that's sacred to us. All of us know that that's the most important thing to us. Thank you for uh, allowing us to sit at the table with you, listen carefully, and then do our best to make things happen but it couldn't happen without, quite frankly, the governor appointing quality people, many women from this state, to take part in commissions and boards who run state government on a daily basis. And did he make a good choice as chairman of the UT Board of Regents? Yes, he did, with a West local boy, Gene Powell. And did they make a good choice in Dr. Sigaroa? Yes, they did. And it, we must continue. 
we must continue to, to do our share to make it possible that those that follow will have bridges of opportunities in the future. This is a wonderful Christmas gift. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. God bless you. Terry Canales. Terry Canales represents Edinburgh and represents UT Pan Am right here. Terry. Dr. Nelson, Chancellor, Chairman, Mayor, Senator. When I first met Dr. Nelson, I was startled by how many times I'd seen him cry. <laughs> I now get it. When I spoke with the Chancellor this earlier this week, I became emotional when he described to me what was transpiring. Education is the cornerstone of our society. It is the great equalizer. And for decades now, the valley hasn't fallen behind. It's been left behind. And with the announcements that we're hearing today, we are going to have the opportunity to be on par to raise and become at the same level as other universities. I'm, one of the greatest prides that I have of representing District 40 is having the University of Texas Pan Am in my district. It is a shining star of the Rio Grande Valley in my opinion. I attended a board, a uh, um, assembly, a general assembly, the Edinburgh Consolidated School District and Avidan asked everybody who had graduated from the University of Texas Pan Am to please stand up. And it looked like a tidal wave <laughs> at a sporting event. And I got chills. I told him then and there, and I expressed to the president then and there, that the University of Texas was my top priority. Education is my top priority. The chancellor was speaking, and he said that he believed that it would change the landscape and the economic landscape, the social landscape and the educational landscape of the Rio Grande Valley. He believes, and I, but I am certain. And the other thing I am certain of is that I will work tirelessly to make sure that the legislature supports these efforts. The far-reaching effects of this advancement are so profound that they are immeasurable. I know that I don't speak I speak for the rest of the Valley delegation when you can have faith that we will pursue this vigorously and tirelessly. I'm honored to be here. I'm excited to be here at this time of our lives, at this turning point of the University of Texas Pan Am. And I want to thank you and congratulate not only the citizens of the Rio Grande Valley, the chancellor, his team, the chairman, um, for the advancements that they have laid before us. Um, this is truly a wonderful Christmas present. Thank you, God bless you, and um, please make sure that you support this measure. Representative Longoria, he represents my personal house, okay, where I live. <laughs> Well, I'm truly honored and humbled to be here. Um, I actually had the pleasure and the honor to go to this university. I attended UTPA. It was part of my schooling. Um, I went to the University of Texas at Austin where I attained a, a law degree. But as I was coming over here, I was thinking, can you imagine what the impact the decision is going to have on our future? There's a child in Peñitas, there's a child in La Feria that's attending public school, that's a middle schooler, elementary schooler, possibly high schooler, that will graduate from that public school, attend this new university, possibly attend this new medical school, and be providing geriatric care for me at DHR. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, you know, a lot of people contributed to this. Um, they always discussed it. You know, we want to have a medical school in the valley. Uh, well, now it's going to become a reality. Um, all I can tell you is me, Terry, and the Valley Delegation is going to continue to run with this torch so that we can light this fire to 
open up this institution. Um, it's so close, we can't let it go. We need to spread the word. Um, and it's gonna be amazing because this will impact everybody. It's gonna impact from Laredo all the way out to the island. It's gonna be immeasurable. And hopefully I'll be able to see it towards the latter part of my, my years if I get to live that long. But the impact made today and made yesterday is gonna be amazing. And I wanna thank everybody that carried the torch and uh, we're gonna continue to fight the battle. And I'll tell you this, me and Terry will kick, scream, punch, whatever we have to do to make sure we get that two thirds. Um, and I think it'll happen. So just thank you. Um, I'm honored to be here, and I think we need to just uh, shake hands, embrace each other, and really enjoy this and soak in the moment because it's going to be a, a transformation for this area. Thank you. So this is a beginning. This is a new day. The game, this isn't a game changer. The game has changed. And we're going to go out, and we're going to go out and party, and we're going to go out and celebrate. And then in June, when that law has been passed, after each one of you have written to every one of the representatives up there, <laughs> after each one of you have gone to every event that you can go to to influence people, we'll celebrate again and we'll build one of the greatest universities that will ever exist. So let's go out and let's party.